Hello and welcome to my latest new rack video. Uh, this time uh, it's all about tricks and tips and editing features. But I would like to start by outlining a few of the new modules that have been added in the last couple of releases. So we'll begin with this demonstration of Evolver running through a little rack I've thrown together which uses the new scope feature and the audio gate which was introduced in the last release. Now the scope is just one example of visual features which I've been adding recently and I'm going to go over how to use those in your own uh, racks and uh, how to uh, modify the layout and the presentation of these elements. Now another recent addition is the light object module and that allows you to create things like uh, lit valves uh, bulbs and and such like and then attach them to controls uh, as we can see here so light objects can be colored they can uh, be connected to on off buttons and they just have two states or they can be connected to knobs and faders and gradually uh, increase in brightness uh, but they give a nice uh, uh, additional boost to your presentation. But I guess the motivation for this video has to be the fact that there's a number of features hidden away within this uh, the modules that people are not stumbling on. So I need to go over those and just highlight a few of the features that you might not know about. So as you can see, I've got an instance of Chameleon running in the background and I've got an empty rack. So if I press the edit button in the bottom left corner, we've got the little plus icon and we can add an effect. In this case, I'm going to add the new formant filter and set it to trigger on tempo. Now if we click the plus symbol on the output of the effect, we can add a reverb to that effect chain and lower the mix slightly, otherwise it'll be overkill. Now it'd be nice to have some visual feedback so if we uh, press the plus icon again and go for uh, visuals and we'll pick the scope in this case. Now even though this is construction mode where we can wire up effects, uh, all the components still work in this mode. Um, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert an effect. If I click on the input of an effect, I get a chance to insert. And I'm going to put a tape delay in here uh, just to uh, uh, finish off my chain. Now once the chain is complete, we can press the interface builder button and then go and start designing our own interface for this. Now, initially, you'll see everything crammed on screen, so I can pinch to zoom uh, to get more of an idea of where everything is. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the red rectangle around the whole frame. And this frame can be resized if you drag. Now, if you try and cut off components, it will resize back around them again, but you can see we've got some vertical height there. And we can start dragging these components about. Uh, you've got to drag by the, the window title to drag a component. So let's move the formant filter and the delay down to the bottom of the rack and then uh, we'll take some of these other items and try and fit them in at the top. Now when I resize the bounds of the scope you'll notice that the scope's cut off but you can disable clip to bounds within the tool palette and then these items within the module can actually move outside their own frame. Now I could have got round that by resizing the actual frame, but in this case I don't really want the frame. So if you click on no title and no border, um, we can freely move this about and position it wherever we like now. Now this pop-up tool palette on the bottom right appears when we click in a module. So it always reflects the contents of the module or the selected items within that module. So now we can see what actual screen space we need. Uh, we can go ahead and resize the frame to encompass that. 
So if you just click on the little uh, icon in the bottom right corner of a window and drag that to get rid of the empty space. Now you'll notice that if we come out of edit mode, the actual uh, interface centers, but while in edit mode, it always left justifies. So you, you, you can work and actually resize. So I'm clicking on each module in turn and turning on the no board option, just so it, it gives us a title to deal with. Now I've selected the power button and I'm going to pick a line horizontally, which centers that power button within its own frame. And we can do the same with a group of uh, knobs underneath. It, we'd have to uh, deselect the power button and select the group of knobs and they will all be uh, centered as a group within that frame. Now if clip to bounds was turned off, those group of knobs would have been centered within the whole uh, master frame and not within their own module frame. Just a word of warning. Now I'm selecting the actual scope and I'm changing its color. It's as simple as just selecting it and, and changing the sliders. And as you can see, I'm pressing something on the um, keyboard and looking for a color combination that works best. I like the greens. Now with the uh, scope selected, if I hit the copy button, that color will be copied into the clipboard. I can then go ahead and select a group of options and paste that color uh, to those knobs, that knob and those power buttons. And we can do the same throughout uh, each of these effects. Uh, we'll give them all this nice green colour and uh, it might be a bit overboard on some components. We might need to tone it down, but it gives us a bit of a look. Now the titles now are at odds. So if you click on the actual um, frame, uh, we can recolor that frame. And again, I'm having a slightly darker colour on the title. So I'm going to copy that colour and then paste that colour uh, to each of the uh, individual modules. Now you'll notice on the left side of the rack there's actually a, a no-name uh, title and we can change that by hitting the menu button at the top left and just picking uh, the rename option. Now one thing to note, this is just a display name here, it's got nothing to do with the actual file name that you actually finally save this rack under. So if we um, press the interface builder button, you'll notice that the effect centers. And if you double tap on the exterior, you go into something called presentation mode. And this is the kind of mode that you want to be using in your effect. So I've knocked this up fairly quickly and as you can see, it's, it's okay. So let's take a closer look at the new light objects. Now, just like the scope, these have been added to actually tart up your interface and make it look a little bit more like a conventional effect. Um, as you've noticed, the uh, modules are usually quite minimalistic. So if I pull up something like this overdrive here, you see there's only two knobs and an on off button. So what I'm going to do, I'm click uh, on the input and I'm going to add a light object uh, just before it. And you'll notice that there's actually an assign button at the bottom. And if we click this assign button, you'll get a list of all the effects that are currently in your rack. If I click the effect, I get an option of all the, uh, the switches and knobs within that rack. And when I assign it to the power button, you'll see it immediately lights because the power button is lit. So if I come out of edit mode and toggle that power button, you'll see the state of the light object changes. But if I click the assign button and this time uh, assign to the gain knob, you'll notice as, as I increase the gain, the um, brightness of this light object changes. Now if I quickly switch to interface builder mode and we go into edit mode, um, we can double tap on the light object and change the contents, the view. Now this particular object is one of my favorites and it's one that we saw earlier on in the video. And uh, it's actually a valve, but uh, as you can see, it, it looks quite nice. Now we can actually um, change its color within here to anything we want. And uh, these objects can obviously be resized um, just like everything else. So if we double tap and find an object we like, we could resize and create a light of a, a size that is fitting for what we want. Uh, in this case, a little mini LED. If I want a little red LED um, that um, goes on and off with the um, with the power button, 
currently connected to the gain control but we can soon reassign it back to the power button um, it's really easy okay now one thing that is confusing people is um, the alignment tool when editing and it's one of the most important tools to get everything lined up perfectly so let me just resize this frame so I can demonstrate uh, I'm just going to move this out the way temporarily and you notice the frame resizes but we've got this um, light object at the top here and it is within its own module frame and we can pick some of these alignment options and just see what happens if we align horizontally it centers horizontally if we align vertically it centers vertically but it's within its own frame we can uh, align left and it will align at 10 pixels from the left same with align right and align top now one thing to note here is it does if we turn the title off and align top it does know about titles now there's one important thing here if we turn off clip to bounds that alignment works completely differently and now when I align horizontally notice it actually centers within the bounds of the frame not within the bounds of the module now one thing I should have mentioned is once you've made an assignment with a light object the, uh, the light object uh, assign button really needs to disappear so if you select that click the options button you can hide it and if we were to flick in and out of edit mode you would notice that the uh, assign button will disappear now if more than one object is selected that behavior is slightly different so if we select a couple of objects and say uh, align horizontally they're uh, horizontally aligned as a group so the space spacing will be maintained if we pick the two and say align right then all of the objects are aligned to the most right of the objects again we can pick something like align top and they'll be perfectly aligned to the tops of the objects now if we take something a little bit more complicated with more knobs like the parametric EQ and I go into interface builder mode I can show you a couple more useful tools and I know I'm repeating myself here but if we were to drag one of these knobs outside its module boundary it would disappear because clip to bounds is turned on if we turn it off we can freely move these knobs wherever we want so I'm going to drag four of these knobs out of the module frame and we're not interested in the rest so let's just focus on these four at the bottom so as we've seen before if you select all four and pick align top they'll all align to the, the topmost item now if you pick the align space horizontally option it will evenly space them out from the start to the end and, and dole out that space and you can even do this uh, vertically as well so if we set up the vertical one and align to the right and then pick uh, align space vertically you can see that they're evenly spaced now I appreciate it's sometimes difficult to get to grips with all this uh, but we do have an undo option so if you make a mistake you can hit that undo option and go back probably about five levels I think of undo so uh, that that would prove quite useful I think to a lot of you when you're starting off and the last thing that I'll probably uh, get a chance to point out is the fact that when you start resizing these knobs they initially start at 64 by 64 pixels and it resizes in 10 pixels by default because the snap to grid is set to 10 so change this to a lower value to get more accurate resizing okay that's about your lot for today thanks for watching see you next time